acquisition of course materials is a very complicated process particularly when we are talking about the print form of course materials with our li limited experience at stride in revising the programs of postgraduate diploma in distance education and ma in distance education we have come across quite a few problems issues in revising the materials and these are academic in nature large extent and some are operational and cost related issues to discuss these issues we have professor kaul with us who will be dealing the issues related to the revision process professor kaul was at igno as a provice chancellor of stride indira gandhi national open university as a provice chancellor at stride he had given a shape to various activities and functions of the stride as a faculty at stride including me we benefit from his guidelines and direction set at stride professor call at present is heading the distance education center at university of west indies sir what is the significance of the revision process of the print materials in the open and distance learning revision of course materials in distance education is a part of uh, teaching and learning transaction the idea is simple that uh, once you have prepared a course the course does not live forever things change data changes theories change application of those theories changes and therefore education and the content of education keeps on changing and in distance education normally content gets compacted whether it is print format or audio programs or video programs uh, they do not function like a teacher in the classroom who is live because a live teacher can come next year and bring in new elements changes new data new information uh, which becomes imperceptible but he has already brought in new things but in distance education systems where the matter gets compacted in book format or whatever other format electronic or so you have to revise materials from time to time in order to keep uh, your materials up to date in order to bring in changes that you need to change and additionally in order to remove errors uh, that might have occurred that might have come in uh, willingly or unwillingly into the materials that you have prepared yes, sir as you rightly said uh, to bring in the new things and to remove the errors from the material particularly once you have packed everything in the print form it's not very easy to change the 10 courses of a program or a five courses of program well, how often should we go for a process of this kind yeah uh, in the first place uh, one needs to look at the system you are following supposing uh, your master medium is print then there are certain industrial considerations and also academic considerations that you have to keep in mind what do i mean by industrial considerations supposing the first print run was 10000 booklets and of those 10000 booklets in a particular year you have used just 3000 you are lef left left with 7000 and unless you use those 7000 booklets uh you you can't go for a revision because those 7000 have been uh produced they are there money has been put in and even if you wanted to kind of revise them the finance department or accounts department will raise objections which are legitimate they will then question how come you uh produce so much and now you want to change it right so uh when you talk of uh, print as master medium you have to take into consideration the industrial part uh, when you want to revise it the academic part is there and if there are changes coming in uh, soon faster then you can accommodate those changes in the form of supplements you can retain those 7000 copies use them next year but supply supplements so in a sense what i am saying therefore uh, that those revisions should come in almost every year but if you are using the print as your master medium you may not be able to do it every year yes. then you have to fix a kind of schema for that and go on by degrees now given the current situation as we are moving on to 
modern technology, if your materials are on let us say on a disk, whenever you find an error, you can go to the disk, open your computer and make that correction. Of course, you may not be able to supply that because your material is perhaps packed in a certain way immediately to the students, but the process in today's technological context is that revisions can be incorporated simultaneously side by side. Now, all having been said, obviously, I am not talking of a major full revision in this case, right. Uh, but generally, it would uh, depend on, a, on, the, on the subject also. For example, there is a subject, let us say Indian economics. Now, in such a subject, data usually pertains to a year because next year things might change. Now, in such subjects, you have to effect revisions more often uh, than kind of uh, you might do elsewhere. But there might be a subject like history where you may not effect a revision immediately. The life of that kind of course could be longer. So, one factor therefore, is the nature of the subject itself. The second factor is the industrial element involved and the third factor is obviously, the academ academic need. Yeah. Uh, so, I would not really kind of fix a time schema for that ok, after 5 years you should do it, after 2 years you should do it. Uh, it should be a continuous process. Now, it is only in case of a thorough revision when you almost overhaul the whole course that you can fix a time and uh, in fact, that should be done more or less at the planning stage that ok, this is the course which we have produced and we will allow it a life of 3 years or we will allow it a life of 5 years. Having said that, you can even decide on then print, print runs accordingly. That is it. I think uh, Professor Kaur quite a few things are uh, interrelated. It is yeah. not that uh, as you rightly said that uh, whether it is a 5 years period yeah. one can give for the revision or a 1 year one can yeah. do it and one has to take all the components which you have yeah, a, a detail, right. explained. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think sir, the, uh, one thing is that industrial aspect which you said that yeah. I think uh, ok, if uh, depending on the subject faculty and experts are aware of it at the planning stage itself they can see that ok, yeah. the changes will be required when you are talking about the budget and the economic yeah. this thing yeah. or a tax or so, so, of yeah. that kind. Yeah. So, naturally the print rent instead of going for a large amount yeah. of 10,000 I think that is important issue yeah. I think. Uh, and as you rightly linked up with the ones uh, technology use, I yeah. think the technology is, uh, is a very handy particularly for the print uh, form also. Yeah. And then if you totally linked up, do you think that uh, we can uh, go frequent revisions? Yeah, uh, frequent uh, revisions can usually be relatively small revisions. You see, yeah. you have come uh, across a certain mistake or you want to knock out a subsection yeah. somewhere you can always do that, put that if you are using print medium, put that on a uh, supplementary sheet and send that with the material next year. Yeah. Uh, advising students that they can ignore page 10 and instead of the page 10 in the booklet, you. they can see this supplement. So, that can always be handled with the help of supplements, yeah. minor mistakes and bigger mistakes. In certain cases, you see corrections, errata are associated or sent to students uh, in the following year. I think to put it uh, the quite a few things in yeah. a, a, a process or a stage wise that where w uh, we can benefit out of that one's Professor Kaul. Could you elaborate what are the major processes and the stages uh, uh, okay. uh, if you one, ha at one wants to attempt a, uh, the revision. In this. Okay, let us look at this way. You see the exercise of revising materials really starts uh, when the production ends. That is you have program A, you have gone through certain processes and the production is completed. So, you have your booklets on your shelves, you have your audio programs and uh, video programs on your shelves. Now, as I said production is complete, the material is in your hand and the process of revision starts at that point. Now, whosoever is the coordinator of the course, course, he will naturally look into, uh, he is eager to see what has been printed or wha what is available now, goes through that. On the third page, he may find a mistake, he should immediately jot that down. The process there is what is known as corrections file, yeah. keep a file and whatever corrections you need to make, you come across errors and all that, jot that down, keep a record of that. 
that will be done by the faculty. Then if your you see program evaluation process is on and you have sent questionnaires to students and tutors requested them that they should comment on errors and kind of misinformation or whatever needs to be modified that should flow to you and to the faculty so that records are kept and they are maintained. Then again I go back to the idea of program evaluation that if that is being done and should be done during the pilot Oops. period, whatever emerges from that, those things also should be noted. There might be a certain section that usually happens in social sciences which is objected to by masses or a certain community and you need to knock out that. Say that becomes an input to the That is all program. that is input yes. from that, you uh, see uh, what you call yes, uh, program evaluation into these things. You keep a record of that right from the beginning. And maybe next year, if your technology is up to date and things are on the diskettes, you can straight away bring in those changes. And depending on whether you are going for a major revision or minor supplemental revisions, you can accordingly use that. So, in fact, your question was where do we start? You start revision, the process of revision at the stage when the course material is produced. It is now at your hand. You may not have even sent it to students, but a conscientious academic will start going through that. The material may not have gone to the students, but he may already have identified 10 errors which he thinks should be corrected. Make a note of them, use that corrections file at the, at the time you want to go for revision. Yeah. I think uh, this is bringing out an important component. I think yeah. uh, whenever we plan that one, I think program evaluation uh, I will give really the rich inputs to the revision process. Yes, yes. I think revision depends to a great extent on program evaluation. You see, revision is not just content mm. because I think so far what we are talking about was a focus on content. content. But revision is not just content. Maybe you would like to change the package. Mm. You can change and you can revise the package. Now, what do I mean by that? Let us say your course package comprises print material in self-instructional format, a certain number of tutorials, a certain number of assignments and whatever. I mean maybe field video, study, video programs, fi video programs yes. audio programs. If program evaluation has done and you get feedback from all the concerned tutors, public and students and your own faculty, you might think that some components are not needed. So you can even revise what we say the package you may need to knock out, okay, in this case field study is not needed yeah. or assignments of this kind are not useful or of the 10 assignments that we gave, 3 are not good, we need to drop them. So, you can change, you can revise the package also. So, it, it, is, uh, it is not just the content, but also the package that can be revised and inputs got from any source yeah. are welcome. Yeah. Uh, Professor Kaul, with your uh, wide experience uh, with various other uh, open learning systems in various countries and of course with IGNO and within India we have. Uh, is there any tested models for the revision process? Uh, if at all there are mm. one, I think which one will be more suitable for the Indian countries in general? I think uh, I would say that I am not aware of models, yeah. but uh, what I am going to tell you immediately, you may see some models in them. Uh, one is in fact which we already talked about that is once the course is produced people work on it right from that Begin. point and the inputs come from various sources a conscientious academic, a student, a tutor and even public. Yeah. Right? So, this is one way and you keep a track of you keep track of those things you incorporate those changes uh, whether through supplemental sheets or as a major component. The other way of going for a revision is usually through a commissioned analysis. That is you appoint some scholars as a kind of special case to look into a particular course and then they talk about the courses and the programs, uh, the program which those courses make. They will tell you okay in this particular course these are the drawbacks, this can be added, that can be avoided and so on. So, you get a sort of commentary a sort of you see kind of analysis of the materials from those experts and then on the basis of those suggestions you then make a revision, you, you make changes. To my mind these are the two major ways of doing uh, uh, what you call revision. One through a commission survey of the program where you pay to those people 
because they are not your components. You have gone outside the institution. Like external the, evaluators. Yes, external e evaluators. And the other is which happens within the institution through a system of, I would broadly use the term program evaluation, mm -hmm. through a broad term of PAC, broad expression or broad exercise of program evaluation. Uh, I think uh, with uh, the experience which we got a limited way from the revising the materials uh, for PGDD and MAD yeah. materials, yeah. I think uh, we followed that method of, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, used external evaluation in terms of a program evaluation. They have yeah. given their feedback. Yeah. And in addition yeah. to that, what you explained that various yeah. other inputs from the students yeah. and other things put together, yeah. I think that helped uh, a lot in our... Uh, okay, I think that. I have some knowledge of that, that exercise. Yeah. You see, the major reason that uh, you had to use external evaluators in this case was really because the course uh, or the program got internationalized. You see, yeah. the program was used not only in India, yeah. but it was used outside India. And the concern was that the specific Indian orientation to the program uh, perhaps did not suit an international orientation. And since it was to be given an international orientation, it was given to international evaluators. And so they worked yeah. on it pointed out wherever they felt that the orientation was local and things of that mm. kind. So that sort of purpose can also be served. But you can do it with any program, even within our own country. You don't have to go outside the country. You, can, you have a certain program A, you can invite people from University of Other Bombay, University of Andhra Pradesh or whatever. Mm. They can look into it and tell you something about the uh, content which you can modify. Uh, but if you give it to conventional academics, they may not be able to talk about the, the, the structure of the courses, the format of the courses and the package that we give. And I think uh, about package and about the kind of format, people in stride or at the university in various faculties, they should be able to talk about it. Yeah. Professor Kaul, uh, in, in the course of at, uh, minutes back, minute back, I think uh, we were talking about the, which one is the prime medium? I think mm. it is a print or uh, audio video in mm. the uh, total package of uh, this thing. Mm. So in Indian context, I think in including IGNO, yeah. it is the print based it material the print, in the prime yeah. media. Yeah. 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 I think keeping that as a view, yeah. so if uh, if an Indian scenario we are going for a revision, yeah. what are the uh, 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 serious problems or uh, challenges we come across in the revision process ah. and how to overcome that? If could you see basically if we follow the system, uh, there are no challenges. Uh, I mean, I, I can be... Uh, as dogmatic about this uh, as I could. Um, there are no challenges if you have planned it right from the beginning. If you have seen revision as your task. If you don't see revision as your task, then there are hurdles and hurdles because then you say, oh, why should I be doing it? But this is why I, you, you see, use the term conscientious academic. Okay. That was my kind of emphasis and concern. I'm not talking about academic. I mean, academic might kind of prepare a course and, and then forget, forget about, about it. it. Yeah. It has to be a conscientious academic who can look at a program, at a course within the faculty as his or his or her faculties and therefore feels concerned that, okay, now this course has run for one or two years, uh, we need to revise it. So basically, I would say there are no hurdles. Uh, if there is any hurdle, if there is any constraint, it might be the weakness of the basic plan. Revision has to be integrated with the total plan of uh, offering courses, so that you make room in terms of finances, you make room in terms of human resources that you will do, and you make room for any kind of technical input that is needed. Therefore, I, I wouldn't say there are constraints. The constraints might be only because of weak planning. Yeah. Yeah, as you rightly said, the consciousness academic will have yeah. all those things taken into when he starts the yeah. revision yeah. and keep it ready. Yeah. And uh, uh, another important component is okay, uh, you should have a uh, some sort of a broad schedule for the revision mm -hmm. process. Yeah. and then had a ring to that one yeah. because that is not easy the day I complete a revision yeah. I can simply it offer yeah. because it is linked with the logistics yeah. when you are going to offer the revised material yeah. and because the previous group will be having the old material yeah. so all those things what what do you see sir how, how one should go with the you see uh, this is again I think the answer is already there it depends on your plan planning. you see in the plan thing you state what is happening uh, at what stage 
Uh, a good example, again, I don't know how of that, how much of that can be uh, illustrated here, but uh, you have worked on your own courses, yeah. uh, diploma, postgraduate diploma in distance education, and then uh, master's degree in distance education. If you recall how you moved oh. through that, uh, that should give you a good idea of the track. You see, at one time, in the f initial year, units went to students one by one. In the second year, they were in a book format, mm -hmm. and only there were 12 books. And in the third and fourth year, right. the Added number, they became 20. Two. And that uh, fourth year, they became 25. The revisions were incorporated all through. And today, your total programs, I think you have now 9 into 5. You have 45 Five blocks. Yeah. Right? And, project, and yeah. they, they, they came in not at one go. go. They came in stage by stage, stage by stage. And you adjusted that with what kinds of students. Effort has to be made. Students of year X will work on this. For them, assignment A is there. Mm -hmm. Students of X plus 2 will work on this. For them, assignment B is there. Uh, you, you go through that. That is the planning part. That is how it has to be done. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, it is a so called, it is a some specific thing. What I'm asking is, uh, yeah. with the experience tried got uh, by revising the materials of uh, PGDD and MADE programs, yeah. uh, if you want to give some inputs to other colleagues in the yeah. at IGNO and other faculty, what way? How might you do uh, how that? Might we do okay, that the best that? thing yeah. is to prepare a case study, right? Yeah. That is revision of these programs. Make a case study. What yeah. happened? Why was this revision seen as a necessity? Then what were the constraints? What happened as far as funding was concerned? Who did what? Narrate that yeah. and then talk to people about that, a case study. That could be one. And again, I go back to the same PGDDE uh, and then MADE, pro how they grew. Make a case study of that over the years and give examples how the first version was different from the second, how the second version was different from the third, how the third version was different from the fourth, and how transaction could take place. I mean, at times, the second version was still on with older students when the third version was given to the new set new of st students. And there were occasions when three versions were handled simultaneously. And that was imperceptible because it was planned that way. Nobody knew what was happening, but it was happening. Yeah, right? as you rightly said, it's. Uh, I think planning uh, is important. important. Planning yeah. is important. Yeah, and as you said, that how to convey this experience. I think the best way is to prepare a case, prepare these two case studies, yeah. and show yeah. how it is done. I think uh, some of the colleagues are of the view, okay, uh, like it's a conventional system. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a syllabus is changed, so the new component is given to the teacher, so that he used to explain in the yeah. class. Yeah. And here also, okay, by changing the one block or uh, adding the supplement, as you said, yeah. It, yeah. that can take care of the revision. Yeah. I think with our experience, it says that it's not the case that unless not the case. You, to, uh, you see that the supplement the takes care of immediate needs. A limited, is, yeah, limited thing. You see, you talk of a thorough. Uh, overhaul, a complete revision and a minor revision. And in this case, uh, though that is not strictly speaking under uh, revision, withdrawal. At times, you may have to withdraw a course yeah. completely, but that is not the theme right now. But these are the, you see, minor revisions, major yeah. revision, withdrawal. We are not talking of withdrawal, withdrawal right yeah. now. Minor revisions you can manage through supplements and other things, but a major revision, thorough revision has to be complete. Yeah. Professor Kaur, you have explained in detail the various uh, processes involved in the revision of the course materials and what are the various sources that can give uh, inputs for the revision process. Uh, I, these are the very important process, one or two which are emerging is, one is the uh, preparation or a, a clear cut room for the revision purposes one should make in the beginning of the program planning itself. Yeah. And another major factor is that is the program uh, evaluation. Uh, yeah. of the each program or each course which give it as input. Thank you very much, sir, for yeah. the valuable inputs. This will help not only our uh, students of the various programs and the faculty at IGNO and STRIDE. Thank you very much. You have listened from Professor Kaul what are the various components of uh, revision and various stages involved. And, uh, and, the, uh, and the sources for revision comes from different quarters, starting one of the important thing is uh, program evaluation. 
uh, if, if, if one is really interested, one should look at that program evaluation. We have a separate program on that one. The inputs which are coming from that will be a very useful for the revision of a, any course or a program. Uh, I hope you all will benefit from this, uh, this program. Thank you very much.